Imagine a world where you can't trust your own eyes and ears. Well, buckle up, science seekers, because that world is here. Deep fakes are exploding online, and they're so good, they're fooling everyone, maybe even you. Ready to dive into the AI-powered rabbit hole that's reshaping our reality? Hey there, my curious cognitive companions. Theodore here, ready to blow your minds with today's deep dive into the world of deepfakes. We've got some brilliant minds joining us to unpack this digital Pandora's box. From the mind-bending tech behind these fakes to the AI superheroes trying to unmask them, we're covering it all. So put on your skeptical specs and let's navigate this brave new world of digital deception together. Hey everyone, you ready to deep dive? Today, it's all about deep fakes. Got some seriously interesting research and news lined up, so get ready to impress at your next dinner party conversation. Definitely a hot topic. You know, it really makes you think about how much we trust what we see and hear online these days, especially with elections coming up. Right, okay, so for anyone new to this whole thing, what exactly are deep fakes and why should we even care? Basically, it's where someone's face, sometimes even their whole body, gets swapped out in a video using, you guessed it, AI. And the crazy thing is, this tech is getting so good you can barely tell it's fake. Kind of like that scene in Mission Impossible, but it's actually happening. Exactly. And it's not just some Hollywood magic. This is some serious AI at work. The research we're diving into today looks at four main techniques. Deep fakes, face to face, face swap, and neural textures. Each one has its own quirks, but neural textures, using these things called generative adversarial networks, or JANs, are making some crazy realistic fakes. GANs. Okay, now you're just using big words. What are those? Imagine two AIs, right, going head to head. One's like the artist, making these images or videos, and the other one's the critic, trying to spot the fakes. Yeah. So as they daddle it out, the artist gets better at faking, the critic gets better at detecting, and boom, you get these super convincing deep fakes. So it's like an AI arms race happening right inside our computers. Is that what's causing this whole surge in deep fakes everyone's talking about? It's definitely part of it. The tools to make this stuff are becoming more accessible, which is both cool and kind of scary. But the other thing is deep fakes work. Some sub, they do digital verification, found a 245% jump in deepfakes globally just in the first part of 2024. Wow, 245%. That's huge. What's driving that kind of increase? Look, like I said, the tools are getting out there. Yeah. But we're also seeing how good deepfakes are at, well, fooling people. Think of it, we're programmed to believe what we see, right? right. But these hyper-realistic fakes, they mess with our heads, our perception of what's real. That's what makes them so dangerous. And so open to being used for bad stuff. It's no surprise that some sub-found deepfakes are spiking in countries with elections coming up. The U.S. saw a 303% increase, India 280%, and get this, Indonesia had a 550% jump. It's a recipe for disaster, really. Big okay. elections, and now you throw deepfakes into the mix. It's like adding fuel to the fire of misinformation. Uh -huh. Talk about a political minefield. What are the chances that future elections could actually be swayed by fakes? It's a real concern, no doubt. Yeah. And that's why researchers are scrambling, trying to find ways to detect these things. One company, Revealance, they just came out with a new deep fake detector. It analyzes videos for these little glitches and emotional responses. So like a lie detector, but for videos, how does that even work? It's pretty wild. You see, human emotions, they're complex. It's not just a smile or a frown. It's all these micro expressions, these little cues that are really hard for deep fakes to get right. Revealance's tech is designed to pick up on those inconsistencies. Like having a digital detective who can spot a fake smile a mile away. But this isn't just about individual videos, right? How do we protect whole systems from deep fake attacks? That's where cybersecurity comes in. Remember President Biden's executive order on cybersecurity back in 2021? That really set the stage for a more modern approach to cybersecurity and government, especially with this thing called zero trust architecture. And zero trust, that's all about never trust, always verify, right? Like every user, every device on a network could be compromised. Exactly. And one of the big ways this order tries to bolster security is through EDR. That's endpoint detection and response. The idea is to be proactive, detect and respond to threats before they blow up into something huge. So it's like having a security system that doesn't just sound the alarm when someone's breaking in, it can actually stop them at the door. You got it. 
And when you think about how deep fakes could be used, impersonating people, getting past facial recognition, even messing with sensitive data EDR could be a game changer. Sounds like it could be crucial, especially with those election cycles coming up. For sure. And it's not just about governments. Businesses, organizations, even individuals could be targeted. Imagine the chaos a well-placed deepfake could cause in financial markets or during some kind of crisis. <laughs> Scary stuff. No kidding. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back to dig even deeper into the world of deepfakes right after this. Okay, we're back and ready to really expose how these deep fakes are made. Before the break, we were talking about the four main techniques. Can you walk us through how they actually work? Like, what's the difference between a deep fake, face to face, all of that? Sure. So let's start with the OG deep fakes. That's the one that really got this whole thing going. The one that started it all. Exactly. It uses this type of AI called an auto encoder. It's like, imagine taking a digital mold of someone's face, capturing all the details, their expressions, everything that makes them unique. That's what the autoencoder does. So if I wanted to make a deep fake of, say, I don't know, my favorite celebrity, I'd need to feed the AI a bunch of pictures of their face. Yeah, tons of them. The autoencoder studies those images, figures out all the little nuances of their features, how they move their face, everything. Then to make the deep fake, you basically swap a part of that AI's, let's call it its brain, with one that's been trained on a different person's face. So you're like transplanting the essence of one person's face onto someone else's movements. Pretty much. And deep fakes were a big deal. But then came face to face. This one's not just swapping faces. It's more about manipulating expressions. It creates this 3D model of the target's face so you can control it really precisely. So it's like being a digital puppet master, making someone make faces they never actually made. You got it. You can make them raise an eyebrow, smirk, anything and it looks incredibly real. You'll often see this used for what they call facial reenactment. Basically, maybe someone look like they're saying or doing something they never did. Like that classic example of putting words in a politician's mouth. Exactly. And we've got face swap, which, pretty self-explanatory, is all about swapping faces. But unlike deepfakes, it can do it in real time. Ah, so those apps that let you swap faces with your friend for a laugh, that's face swap. Yeah, exactly. That's a simple example. It's not so much about making super realistic fakes. It's more about that quick, fun swap, even if it doesn't always look perfect. And it makes it very accessible. Which brings us to Neural's Textures, the one you mentioned that uses those jams, the dueling AIs. What makes that one stand out? Right, so Neural Textures, it takes that 3D modeling from face to face, but then it adds in the power of jams. Remember we talked about that digital duel, that constant back wow, and forth. Wow, two AIs battling it out. Exactly. That's what gives Neural Textures its edge. The artist AI is constantly being challenged by the critic AI, so it gets better and better at making those hyper-realistic deepfakes that are so hard to spot. So it's like the artist AI has a secret weapon, that critic constantly pushing it to be more convincing. Exactly. That's why Neural Textures is kind of the front runner right <laughs> now in creating those crazy, realistic deepfakes. Whoa. Hold up there, folks. Let's break this down for a sec. These deepfakes aren't just some techie party trick. They're like digital shapeshifters, capable of making anyone say or do anything on screen. Imagine if your face could be borrowed without your permission to star in the next big scandal. Scary stuff, right? It's like we're all potentially starring in a Black Mirror episode we never signed up for. It's amazing, but also kind of freaky how fast this is all developing. But the good news is researchers are fighting back using AI to detect these fakes. I was reading that in some cases, AI is actually better than humans at spotting them. That's right. There was some interesting research out of the Technical University of Munich. They built this massive data set of over 1.8 million manipulated images, like way bigger than any other public data set out there. Wow. Talk about big data. So. They basically built a training ground for AI to learn how to spot a fake. What did they find? They found that the AI-based detectors, especially when you combine them with knowledge about how faces really move, you know, the structure of a face, those detectors were way better than other methods. So it's like giving the AI a crash course in human anatomy and expressions. Exactly. And because of that, these AI detectors, they're getting really good at picking up on those tiny little inconsistencies that give away a deep fake. Okay, time for a quick reality check. Science Squad. This AI arms race between deepfake creators and detectors, it's like a high-stakes game of digital whack-a-mole. 
Every time the good guys come up with a new way to spot fakes, the bad guys level up their game. It's exhausting just thinking about it. But hey, at least it's keeping our Silicon Valley geniuses on their toes, right? That's pretty reassuring, honestly. But even if we can detect them, it feels like deep fakes are spreading like wildfire. It can be overwhelming. How do we even start to navigate a world where seeing isn't believing anymore? It's tough. It's almost like we need to develop a new set of instincts for the digital world, be more discerning about what we see online, especially stuff that gets us wild up emotionally. Like, it seems too crazy to be true. It probably is. Right. If something seems off, do your research, check multiple sources, look for signs of a deep fake. Does the movement look unnatural? Is the lighting off? Does the audio match up? Like you said, those new digital instincts. And don't be afraid to question things, even if it's from a source you usually trust. So it's about taking back some control, not being a passive viewer anymore. But it sounds like there's no easy answer, no magic solution to this whole deep fake problem. Definitely not. It's going to take a lot of different things working together. New technology, smarter regulations, and I think most importantly, we need to change how we think about the information we consume online. It's like we're all in this together, figuring out this whole new world of deep fakes and AI-generated content. I like that. The more we talk about it, educate ourselves and each other, the better prepared we'll be. Well said. We'll be right back after a quick break to talk about the companies fighting back against deep fakes and the ethical dilemmas this tech creates. Stay with us. And we're back. Before the break, we were talking about, you know, how we almost have to become detectives online now, constantly questioning everything. It's kind of wild. It really is. And it goes beyond just spotting the fakes. It's the bigger picture, right? Like, what happens when we can't trust what we see and hear? What do they do to our sense of reality? Yeah, it's like the whole foundation of society kind of relies on us agreeing on, like, basic facts. Exactly. Deep fakes, they have this power to undermine everything. Our institutions, the media, even our own personal relationships. It's unsettling. And this technology is moving so fast. Are there even any laws or anything trying to catch up and address this whole deep fake thing? It's definitely a game of catch up. But there are things happening. The European Union, for example, they're leading the way with this thing called the AI Act. Oh, yeah, I think I read about that. It's like they're trying to categorize AI systems based on how risky they are. Right. So a deep fake, like, you know, one used to make a funny meme, that'd be treated way differently than one designed to, say, mess with an election. They're trying to find that balance, you know, allowing innovation, but still protecting people. Sounds like a tough balance to strike. Oh, yeah. What about the U.S.? Anything happening here on a national level? Not at the federal level. Not yet, anyway. There's talk about it, though. But some states, they're not waiting around. They're passing their own laws, mostly focused on deep fakes being used without someone's consent, like in, you know, revenge porn or political campaigns. So it's kind of all over the place right now. Yeah, it's a bit of a patchwork, which makes it harder to actually enforce anything. That makes sense. It's like they pop up faster than anyone can make rules. Exactly. And the fact that it's all online, it crosses borders so easily, that makes it even trickier. So besides those AI detectors we were talking about, what can regular people even do? It feels kind of overwhelming. That's a good question. I think it starts with, like... Being a skeptical online citizen, you know, mm -hmm. don't believe everything you see, especially if it's pushing your buttons emotionally. So think before you react. Exactly. If something feels off, dig a little deeper. Check other sources. Look for those little giveaways, those things that just don't seem right. Like, is the movement weird? Is the lighting off? Does the audio sync up? It's like we've got to develop a whole new set of skills for the Internet. And don't be afraid to be like, hey, is this for real? Even if it's from a source you usually trust. So it's about taking back some control, not just being a passive viewer anymore. But it sounds like there's no silver bullet here, no one solution. No, you're right. It's going to take a lot of things working together, new tech, smarter rules, and maybe the biggest thing is just changing how we approach information online in general. We're all in this together, right? Trying to navigate this whole new world. I think so. And the more we talk about it, learn about it, the better off we'll all be. Absolutely. Well, this has been pretty eye-opening. We've gone from the tech behind deepfakes to the impact on society, even our own sense of reality. It's definitely one of those topics that's both fascinating and more than a little scary, but important to talk about. 
for sure. So until next time, everybody stay curious, stay informed, and stay vigilant. And never stop questioning. That's a wrap on this deep dive into deepfakes. Catch you all next time. Well, my discerning digital detectives, we've tumbled down the deep fake rabbit hole, and boy, is it a wild ride. Remember, in this brave new world, a healthy dose of skepticism is your best friend. Keep those eyes peeled, those fact-checking skills sharp, and maybe don't believe everything you see, even if it looks like your best friend doing the Macarena on Mars. Stay curious, stay vigilant, and keep questioning reality. It's what separates us from the machines. For now. Until next time, this is Theodore, signing off and urging you to trust, but verify, especially on the internet.